Hi, I'm Yong. I'm Panda Bell, and today what I'll be doing is I'll be drawing Yaza Seas. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so y'all know the deal. Y'all know what I'm gonna do. I have a series on this. You know, you might want to go check it out. But today is kind of a special day. Because today, I actually got to draw one of the characters who's been here for a long time. A character I see so often in the forums, and a dude who asked me to draw them is a pretty cool person from what I can tell. I've wanted to draw their character for so long, as you, as a, you know, thank you for waiting with me for so long. And the randomizer was finally kind to them. So today, ladies and gentlemen, today's lucky winner is Soulgate Studios, and their character is Little Bionic Kitty from the game they want to kickstart soon called Respawn. Congratulations! Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now like I said, I've wanted to draw this character for a long time now. They look really cool and their design is just absolutely gorgeous. I love the kitty ears and the disconnected body parts and the fact that they're made out of metal just gorgeous. Also, like I said before, this is a character to a game that they're playing on planning the on kickstarting soon called Racebond. It's a card game that they're working on and it sounds really cool so I'll go ahead and talk a bit about their world and about their character here. So hey, Soulgate Studios, free promotion! I mean I'm just saying whatever info I can find so it just happens to be promotion I guess. Or promotion like. But if any of you are interested, I highly recommend watching them so you can keep up to date on their game and see when it kickstarts. But without further ado, <laughs> their info about their world and character. In an alternate universe on a planet not too unlike our own, days come and days go as they always have. Big events happen and the world is rocked to its core for as long as the headlines make the news until the next earth shattering event sparks interest. This particular planet was well accustomed to being hit by sizable meteorites. So when a meteorite the size of a minivan hit the middle of a rocky desert just off the coast, it made the news but didn't draw much attention. For most, it wasn't even worth investigation. A blip on the radar. But soon, there were other blips on the radar. A metallic object no larger than a human also landed near the crash site. Not long after an ancient space shuttle also crashed within the area. The military was instantly investigating the crash and sent some of their best soldiers. An engineer and space enthusiast saw the crash and immediately picked, packed up their mobile lab and sped to the scene. A nearby pirate felt a change in the winds and altered his course to take his crew to the shore of the landing. Little did they know, they were about to enter into the fight of their lives over and over again. One of the scientists sent to investigate the meteorite quickly realized that this object was a foreign crystal of unknown origin. It matched nothing humanity had seen on the planet or in space. The crystal radiated intense energy. One evening, a soldier killed a deer, hoping to get some fresh meat. The crystal shimmered and crackling energy sh shot from its top, hitting the recently killed beast. The animal appeared to be vaporized, but almost immediately after the crystal shimmered again, an energy arced to an energy spot in the crater. When the dust settled, there stood a living animal, the exact same beast that had just been killed. Immediately recognizing the potential, all those present became very distrustful of one another. Some of the other, indiv other individuals who showed interest in the crash also began to make their appearance. It was long before combat broke out. Many were killed. Those were close enough to the crystal seemed to respawn, much like the beast had done before. Those outside the crater that had caught, caught in the crossfire did not resurrect like those closer to the crystal. 
And so it was that some, terrified at the prospect of dying over and over to capture even such a powerful prize, made their escape and left the desolate crater. Others spurned on by whatever desire it was that they believed the crystal could fulfill, lived, fought, died, and lived again in a never-ending cycle. Who would claim the crystal's power? What would they use its power for? And who else may yet join the struggle? Live, die, respawn. And that's the basis of their game. And now for the character. LBK, Little Bionic Kitty to some, is a life-sustaining robot sent on a mission from a distant galaxy. She was created by a group of alien scientists that had a number of very feline characteristics. Formed in their image, she was implanted with living cells and the most perfect DNA specimens her people could harvest. She was programmed with an AI containing the best scientific and combat knowledge her people had to offer. Then she was fired off into space in order to find a new home for her people. You see, LBK was no ordinary scout. Not long after being fired into space, the star of her solar system exploded and all life on our planet was immediately vaporized. Their people knew it would happen, but they also knew they had no way to escape. So they sent LBK as a scout in order to find another hospitable planet where their race could be reborn and repopulate from the previous genetic code stored away inside LBK. In a low-powered state, LBK activated when a brilliant crystal flew past her. Energy sparked within her and she immediately followed after it. Whatever this crystal was, clearly contained unimaginable power. Power enough, perhaps, to help save her people from extinction. Now, that's the character, and honestly, this game sounds epic. I can't wait to see how it turns out and see what happens with the game. They already got a lot of fan art, and art that just looks phenomenal. The designs for all the characters sound really cool, and not to mention their backstories are just an extra layer of icing to the cake. Delicious. And the cake isn't a lie this time. <laughs> that being said, I hope this artwork does the character justice. I wanted something truly and totally epic and dynamic for the character. I felt like it was needed for a person who's been here for a long time asking me and waiting patiently for them to get picked by the randomizer. And not to mention, but a cool character like this deserves some cool and dynamic pose. It was only right, after all. <laughs> Plus, I felt like it fit the character for them to be in a pose like this. Now, having said that, I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out. The inking for me was so much fun, and adding all the extra glow effects toward the end, that was amazing, and it actually helped the character stand out more from the background, which I was kind of struggling with since I decided to make the background gray. I know the character's gray, and I would have had to make the character stand out anyway, but I underestimated how much the character would blend in with all the grays. So I used lighter grays, darker grays, whites, anything I could to make them stand out. Now, you may be asking, why did you make the background gray if you knew the character was gray? Well, my dear questionnaire, questionnaire, my dear questionnaire, I did it because gray is typically a color our eyes are not drawn to, especially the darker grays. It's one of the reasons you see artists wear grays and blacks when showing off their art. The point is to look at the art, not the person. So with that in mind, I figured that if I made the grays on the character light enough and included colors that do stand out like whites for highlights, maybe the grays on the character wouldn't blend in as much. It was then that I knew. I should have made the background darker, but I already messed with the background and I didn't want to mess with it anymore, so I decided instead that I was going to add glow to the character later to make them stand out. Not to mention, but the oranges and green definitely helps. I also want to say that this character is incredibly detailed 
Now one of the things I forgot to add to the character were a set of orange stripes running across the chest. Sorry, I completely forgot about that. Maybe when this video is over, I'll add it sneakily and post it on DeviantArt. You know, remedy, 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 my mistake, but no promises. I'll do other things, and I do have other things I need to do, so I might not be able to get to it, but we'll see. Oh, another thing I should mention is I suck at drawing guns. Most things that I'm good at drawing is people and stuff like that. And while I do like a reference, I can draw people and all that without references. With guns, I need a very specific reference of that exact angle and the exact gun type for me to get it right. Even then, I'm constantly checking to see if I drew it right. So when I decided to add the gun, I was like, uh... There is a specific type gun they're using in the tracking card of the character. Kind of looks like a staple gun. <laughs> how do I? Did you... How? Yeah, that was fun to figure out. I mean, it was fun. I enjoyed challenges and challenging myself to learn new things to draw. It's just sometimes confusing. <laughs> But I really had a lot of fun drawing this character, the pose was fun, the inking was a blast, and the coloring wasn't too bad either. All in all, I had a fun time drawing an amazing character. But that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you for joining me. I hope you like it, and I'd love to see y'all again soon. See you next week. Stay artsy, my artist armada. Later, Gators!